Any questions from that previous section? I'm, I'm going to try to hold most questions for the end. There's something really pressing you need to ask me. I'm going to try to ask between sections. So, yes, sir. Just wanted to address taking things from Google searches and stuff like that. There are a lot of different techniques that people use. There are a lot of different conventions that they're basing their their um, coding on. And I found it can be very difficult, particularly when you're working on a small team and somebody pulls stuff down from Google from some other site and it's coded in a way that we're not familiar with working with on mm -hmm. a regular basis. It may be well, a very usable thing that you can pop it, in. Is but this it no different than anything else? Bringing in external code is a double-edged sword. So you gotta figure out, am I gonna have to customize this? What am I gonna have to do with this code? Most of the time when I pull in code, I just let it do what it does. That's, that's my thing, say, say like a text editor. Uh, you, can, you can put WYSIWYG text editors in. If everybody here, WYSIWYG is what you see is what you get. WYSIWYG text editors, I don't edit those at all for the most part. There's one called FCK editor, another one called MCE. I, for the most part, it's just a file, you put the include in, and you're done. So if you have to actually customize the file, that's something you want to take into account. And always test everything in a dev environment before you make anything production. Okay? So that's, that's what I would say about that. It's completely valid. It just depends on how much time you have and what you're really looking to do, too. Who here understands a basic client-server model? Let me, see, let me see a show of hands. Good. For those of you who don't, for the purposes of this talk, I'm gonna, when I'm talking about a client, I'm talking about the user's browser and the user's machine. It's local to that individual using it. When I talk about the server, I'm talking about websites, things that exist or elements that exist outside of your system reside somewhere that you're trying to get access to, that you have to have some kind of portal to get to. PHP runs only on the server. So you gotta think about this when you're actually coding, that you only have until it runs on the server and then you're done. Everything just gets spit to the screen. Which means we can only process when a page is requested or a user submits information. Those are the only two times you pretty much can process PHP. You can do it with AJAX, but technically AJAX is when the page is requested, so it's still under that same structure. Um, what can we do? What actually can we do with PHP? Now we know its value. What, what, is it, what, what is it functionally used for? And these are just the uses that I've done in my time with PHP. Database programming is number one. That's a big one everybody knows about. File read and write. Form processing and form validation. AJAX, I've used this quite a bit. It's actually, it's really effective. PDF creation. I'm going to do a little caveat about this because I never thought this was very valuable. I worked for a company in Wilmington not too long ago um, called Quantified Database Solutions. And the coder was a, and the owner of the company was just a genius. Just amazingly, one of the most intelligent coders I've ever met in my entire life. He picked up a client that was, uh, two of them actually, that were cattle breeder associations in South America. And I don't know if you know anything about associations, but a lot of times they have, they have idiosync idiosyncratic forms. You have to use special forms that have to be exactly what they expect because governments use, use this information. And they have these certificates that verify that a, a cattle, uh, uh, one cattle is of a certain breed. And they wanted to be able to dynamically create those out of the system that he created for them. And so he said, all right. And he sat down with a ruler and one of these certificates and measured how far each, each text area was from the part and how big the whole certificate was. And within a week, he had a PDF creation creating dynamic certificates that measured exactly the work for the government directly out of one of our systems. So don't underestimate any of these abilities. They are just truly fascinating. They're truly powerful. File, file search and archive. You can, uh, one of the things we did in my previous job is we would actually archive all of the information in any Excel spreadsheet or any Word document that came up so it was searchable just like anything else in our system. Um, you can interact with web APIs as Google, Yahoo, Amazon. Microsoft Office. Uh, my old boss, we had a CSV program that would go through and read Excel spreadsheets. Not just CSVs, but actually read Excel spreadsheets and could actually get to the columns and everything. It's quite impressive. Image processing and image processing. I, again, I apologize. <coughs> chart creation. This is really nice too. You can create charts on the fly with PHP. XML, email, and you can actually use PHP to write other code, which is part of what we're going to be doing today, writing HTML. We've actually, I've actually used PHP to write PHP. We use PHP to write JavaScript. So think about it. It can be used for these. It can be used for that as well. So for today, these are the three main topics I'm going to cover. I find this bottom one is the most important by far because I can teach you anything under the sun if you don't know how to if you don't know how to deal with the problems you're going to have. You're not going to know what to do. So for me, error trapping is probably the most important thing I can teach you today. The problem with that, if I start with it, you won't know what you're trying to error trap. So I need to give you some, something to look at, maybe teach you some of the HTML, PHP itself before I can show you how to troubleshoot what might go wrong with it. Then I'm, so I'm going to start with 
basic HTML and PHP interaction. How do you get these two to talk to one another? How do you, basically, what, what, what's the deal here? Then, I'm gonna do server validation and processing. It's gonna be a very basic server validation and processing, because as you start going through examples, and we start building some of this up, it just starts eating time away very quickly. Um, also, any one of these topics that I'm covering could be, could be the top, the source of another lecture in the future with far more depth to it. So, what do you need to do this? What do I need to be actually be able to program PHP? Well, you need server space. You want to know how to get server space? Go to this web page. This is the help document on help.unc.edu that will tell you if you have an onion, you have server space, PHP enabled already. You just, know how, you just need to know how to get there, essentially. Uh, the, all the files that I've added to this, added uh, in that zip file, I've tested on my own PHP space and it, they all work. So I tested them all last night. Everything I've given you should work in your, your space just fine. Editing program, this is very powerful. You could use Notepad, which is completely fine. The problem is Notepad does not have a lot of the features that editing programs make very nice. Editing programs say like Notepad++, I'm a big fan of this one because it's free. But they have, um, some of the basic ones at least have code highlighting. They know PHP syntax, and so if when you write a function, it actually highlights it red or highlights it blue. Uh, highlights highlights your, your quotes, so you know when you're in quotes, your variables are usually highlighted. Um, it, has, uh, it has bracket matching, which is really nice. So you get to a bracket, and it will find you that second bracket. <laughs> if you don't find that second bracket, you have an error. So it's been, I've lost brackets before. My thesis, actually, I had to rewrite the whole thing. Not the rewrite. I had to cut and paste the whole thing to a new file because I lost a bracket somewhere. I could never find it. Um, so they're really, really nice features, and some of the nice ones have code completion. You start typing something, it finishes the code for you. It gives you suggestions of what to put. You need an HTML browser to do this. This is your client. So we have our, our files on our server. We need our client. I recommend Firefox. On top of the fact that Firefox is a, just an amazing development community, it's, I, I like the way it renders pages, and it has some add-ons. If then, no one here has either used Web Developer or Firebug, they will change your life as a web, as a web developer. I can tell you that right now. A web developer, I can turn off images, I can turn off caching, I can turn off anything I want. With Firebug, I can, I can real-time see what JavaScript's doing on the page. So it's, they're very useful tools. And a second monitor. This is not needed, but I really recommend this. Because when you've got code and you've got production, moving in between those two can be very difficult. If you're minimizing every time you're trying to test, it just adds to your fatigue. The more fatigued you are, the more difficult this gets. Again, I have a tendency to have like four programming windows up on one and like a, you know 15 tab Firefox up on the other. And that's just that's just how I code. Um, any questions from the previous section? Good. Now, writing clean code. This is important. Before you write anything, I want to make emphasis on this. You are going to look at this program again. Someone's going to look at this program again. You really need to make sure when you do, when you're writing it, you make it very legible. Use tabs for going inside, going inside different blocks of code, just like we do in HTML. For everybody here's done HTML before, I meant you don't all write it on one line, right? So you write HTML tag, then you hit enter, then you write your body tag, right? Then you hit enter, maybe do a tab, and start writing your code. The same thing is going to be true of programming. The better, the better tab and white space your code is, the easier it's going to be for you or anybody else coming behind you to read. So. Let me ask you, which one looks cleaner and easier to read? And keep in mind, both of these pieces of code do the exact same thing. That or that. I'm going to guess everybody's going to say the second one. So this is an example of how we easily, I mean, as a programmer, and if I want to get down to it, that's great. Right. One line of code does everything I want it to do. The problem is, it's mind-numbing to look at. So make sure, make sure when you're writing your code, write as clean as you possibly can. So. PHP files. All PHP files end in .php. Now, technically, you can do some Apache things to make them have HTML endings or whatever ending you want. For this class, just PHP. Make all your files end in PHP. It's how the server knows, oh, that's a file I need to pay attention to. Server only recognizes PHP code within this set of tags, similar to XML, how only certain information will be in certain tags. Only PHP will be recognized inside, inside these sets of tags. You need the first tag, the, the PHP tag, and a closing tag. Everything within that area is considered PHP by the server. <laughs> when you write your open tag, write your closing tag. Every single time. I don't know how many people here have ever written XML by hand, but this is a good rule for that as well. Anytime you're writing this, you want to do it. If you have PHP dispersed throughout your page and you're missing one of these, it is not fun to try to troubleshoot. Anything not in those code, in those tags, is HTML. 
So even if you write PHP code and it's outside those tags, you're going to see your PHP code like it's just text. Same thing is true the other way around. Everything in the tags is PHP. So if you write HTML in the tags, you're going to have an error, unless it's written properly in, inside strings. Almost all statements end with a semicolon. Put a semicolon at the end of almost everything. What doesn't are, are blocks, essentially. So you don't have to do it for blocks, but you, when you're writing in PHP, you want to put a semicolon at the end every single time. So let's look at a quick, a quick example. I'm going to have these dispersed throughout of actual what the code looks like. So here's probably the most basic PHP page one can write. We start with our PHP tag. And I'm going to go ahead and write our closing tag. And then I'm going to add this little piece in here that, that doesn't, won't seem obvious to some of you. I'm going to put this word testing in here. Now, since that's not the tags, that is HTML. PHP by default, and we're going to get into this in this next little piece, PHP by default has an interesting way of handling errors. If the server is not set up to show errors, and you have an error on a PHP page, you get a blank page back. And that's all you get. So there's really no way to know what happened unless you have errors turned on. Well, in a production environment, you won't have that. Okay? And in some dev environments, you have to ask people to give you the permissions to turn the errors on or to have the errors turned on. So I leave this testing up here because I know if I don't see testing, I have an error somewhere on this page. You're going to see that down there quite a bit. It's a little thing I use because it lets me know, okay, I at, least my, at least all my PHP work right because I'm seeing what happened after, essentially. Does that make sense to everybody, why I'm doing that? You're going to see this on a lot of pages. By the way, remove that testing for production, of course. Um, so let's talk about error messages, right? The dreaded empty page. I mentioned this a minute ago. This is just, there's nothing like coding for 30 minutes and hitting refresh on a page and having a blank page. There's, I can't even tell you how fun that is. So it's, it's something to keep in mind that you have to deal with, but we, there are, PHP has many ways of dealing with it, this, and that's called turning on errors. What's nice is, regardless of what the server wants you to do, in my experience, there may be some settings on the server somewhere that I don't know about, but in my experience, I've been able to run this on every server I've been. You can set this, you can set this little function at the top of your page. You know, this is actually on your handout. This function will turn the errors on for that page. Okay? So, and don't forget, everybody has a copy of these slides too. So, so that will allow you to actually get error messages to show the screen. This will show you both warnings and errors. You actually can set different levels for this, but for what you guys are looking for, just, just use this code for now. Later on, you may just want to know the warnings. You may just want to know the errors. But for now, we kind of want to know everything. Do not leave this in production. This is what hackers dream. They look for stuff like this because it tells them about your server. It tells them about your code. It tells them about your intent. It tells them about your information. Don't ever leave this stuff in production code at all. So, how can we turn on errors? Well, let's just do a little example. This one's, gonna, this one's a little more difficult than the last one. PHP, display errors, close it, test it. Now, what's nice about this, the reason I still put the test in there, somebody said, well, you got your errors up there, why do you put test in? Well, can I make a mistake writing that line? I still want to know that my page worked right. So what this will do, what that should effectively do is make it so you see any error that, that happens on your page, what that line does. But I still put my testing in there because I'm neurotic and like knowing my stuff works. And actually, it comes from having, having to troubleshoot a blank page enough that I'm never going to do it again. 